All right, we're going to talk about hydraulics today. Hydraulics. Within this system, we have a main reservoir that holds about 310 cubic inches of fluid. We have a hand pump reservoir, holds about 150 cubic inches of fluid. The amount that it holds does not matter. I'm just putting in perspective how much they hold so you can understand their size. The main reservoir is pressurized by both a spring that will give you information on the gauge as well as it's pressurized by the emergency accumulator. This is the emergency accumulator's side hustle, if you will. It's the emergency accumulator's Uber, okay? Its job is to help pressurize that main reservoir. In addition to the main reservoir and the hand pump reservoir, we have an electric pump. That electric pump is operated by the switch on the top left corner of your pedestal. It's an off, auto, and override positions on that hydraulic pump. Off, obviously off. Auto requires 28 volts. Notice it's guarded. It's guarded because normally this thing's kept in the auto position. Requiring 28 volts means I either have to have the GPU connected or I have to have external power connected. Very important. If I want to actuate my hydraulics to pump up my accumulators prior to starting engines so that I can set, oh, perhaps my parking brake, I need to take the switch into override. Override is powered by battery power, and we can go and override that way. Otherwise, you're going to get to the GPU, and you're going to leave it in auto. The hydraulic, hydraulics will pump these up to between 2100 and 2900. It'll go to 2900, it could bleed off, but if it drops below 2100, it's supposed to pump it back up. If pressure in either one of the accumulators drops below 1850 you will get a hydraulic look down light along with a single chime master caution now once the hydraulic pump takes the fluid from the reservoir and pumps it it pumps it through a filter now it's very important to understand with filters there are filters for a lot of liquid on this aircraft whether it's oil whether it's hydraulics whether it's fuel we have filters in all those systems. At no point will a filter become clogged so much that it will not allow fluid to pass through the filter. There is always a bypass available and based upon the pressure that will allow that fluid to bypass to do its job. Once it's gone through the filter and it comes here, notice at this intersection that there are two one-way check valves. The idea behind these one-way check valves is it prevents fluid pressurized fluid that's gone into the system, either to the left or to the right, from going back into the reservoir. So once it's past these one-way check valves, it doesn't come back until it's been used, and we'll talk about it in a minute. So to the left here, this fluid goes up to the emergency accumulator. That maintains the emergency accumulator between 2100 and 2900 PSI. Coming back to the emergency accumulator, again, we said that its main job, its side hustle, is that it pressurizes the main reservoir. Its secondary job is it releases the emergency uplocks in case of an emergency with hydraulics. Now, if we have an emergency with hydraulics, we have conditional memory items with the hydraulic, hydraulic memory items. First step, if you get a hydraulic look down light, single chime master caution, is to take the hydraulic switch and turn it to the off position. It then says check indicators. What it's asking you to do is to check your main and emergency accumulators. If both are low, we continue with the memory items. If both are not low, then we stop. So if we continue with the memory items, the memory items state slow below 200 knots, landing gear handle down, emergency gear extension handle pull. Now that emergency gear extension handle actuates pressure, for, residual pressure from the emergency accumulator to apply power to the uh, the up locks with explosive bolts to allow the landing gear to, it, it opens the doors and allows the landing gear to free fall. It both, ex, it both explodes the bolts to open the doors as well as use residual pressure from the emergency accumulator to open, open, to actually release the up lock. Now we have a main accumulator as well. The main accumulator, its job is to provide hydraulic pressure for landing gear 
no swivel steering, flaps. I'd mentioned prop brake, but there's only one in the world that I know of, maybe two. They don't exist anymore. Saab removed them based upon operator uh, demand because we as pilots are, well, we're not bright, we break these things. So that's why nobody can, nobody can have nice things because we break stuff. Now, other accumulators that we have, we have an outboard brake accumulator and we have an inboard brake accumulator. These are pressurized either from the pump itself or its secondary form of pressurization, the main accumulator backfills these things. Notice as it comes down that there's a one-way check valve here and a one-way check valve here leading into the inboard and outboard brake accumulators, but there's not a one-way check valve leading directly into the main accumulator. Once these devices, once these accumulators apply pressure to their device and the device is done its job, that fluid then returns back through the line, back to the reservoir. But on the way to the reservoir, it passes the return filter for the hydraulics. Additional things to note, we mentioned this hand pump reservoir earlier. This hand pump reservoir is the secondary way that we can get our landing gear down, we can get our flaps down, we can get various things pressurized. That fluid is off, offshoot from the main reservoir, and that fluid can be used with the hand pump, FO operated hand pump. It's a handle located behind his or her seat to direct the fluid to the device that we want to pressurize. Now, in my humble opinion, of all the things that you can all the things that you can pressurize and you can actuate, the most important one is this one, the landing gear. Now, the thing about landing gear is if you don't have landing gear, it makes for a really short landing distance, and thankfully. Uh, you don't have to go to the bother of putting the stairs down because you're already on the ground. You just open the door and walk home to your next job, right? All right. Other things that actuate, you can, you can bring flaps down. The problem with hand pumping flaps down is if you don't have hydraulics to bring them up and you have to go around, you're going to be drag. You're going to have a lot of drag on the aircraft and it's going to be difficult to climb away. Other thing we can pressurize, nozzle steering, outboard brakes, inboard brakes. Me, my most important thing, I can almost always normally find a longer runway um, to deal with the flap issue, but the landing gear to me is the most important thing that you can hand pump down. Now, continuing on, speaking of the hand pump, when Saab originally designed this aircraft, they put a one-way check valve here. This one-way check valve prevented you from hand pumping the landing gear down. And my guess is operators kind of got the ass on this one and they said, listen, we can normally lower our gear with a gear handle. If that doesn't work, we've got, we need something else other than actuating the emergency accumulator and the explosive bolts because those are expensive. Back in the day, those things were about $2,500 a piece. Last I heard about six years ago, those were about 12 five. Uh, they have to be searched about every 10 years. Um, operators didn't want this to be their secondary backup way of getting the gear down. So Saab deleted, in most cases, with Mod 1463, it deleted this one-way check valve, allowing you to get the landing gear down um, using the hand pump. One aircraft that I know of, 845 Kilo Hotel, still has this check valve, but most others in the world, and please somebody pipe up if they know of one, most other aircraft in the world uh, this check valve has been removed. Uh, other things to note on the slide, anything at all? Um, no, I think we about got it. If you guys have any questions about hydraulics on the Saab, please text me, message me. If you know me, call me. Um, I'll be glad to point out anything I bet have been remiss in in making this video, but I hope that this helps.